Hello and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga Show, episode number 480, that's 480, 480 with me, your host, Agassino Zynga. How are you guys doing? How are you feeling? Great, amazing, good to hear. If it's your first time watching the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash the like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast apps, you know there's a plethora of those out there. Make sure you share and leave me a five-star review. If you're listening to the Apple podcast, that'll be much, much appreciated. And of course, support via Patreon is welcome to at patreon.com for just Agostino. You get on there, all my bonus content for as little as one dollar per month. Subscribe onto the Patreon, get involved there today. I'm gonna drop a little X-rated um, or R-rated, I would say, um, party review of my weekend. So if you want to hear that and and everything I'll go up to then make sure you check out the Patreon on patreon.com for shots A G O S T I N H O to get all of that and more on there. But yeah, how you been? How's it going? You're right, you're alive, you good, you feeling great, you're feeling swell, um, your limbs are where they should be, you're nicely hydrated, you're rested, and all that malarkey. Good, amazing, great. Got a jam-packed show for you to get into today. Loads of topics to cover. Loads of things I've kind of missed out on in the last couple of days. So please bear with me as I just steamroll through all of these topics and more. So grab yourself a drink. If you haven't got a drink already, a little munchy, whatever it may be, to make you comfy and let's dive on deep. So first things first, um, sad news actually to get out of the way. Um, thoughts and feelings go out to this 22 21 year old courtesy of ra who unfortunately passed away over the weekend at london club the cause um no one wants to hear news like this especially when it comes you know via the um via the hands of taking drugs you know i mean it's something that this person did voluntarily and unfortunately um due to you know whatever circumstances that were at play um they were un unfortunate enough to pass away at a club event which is again nothing that anyone wants to see or report or witness in any kind of shape or form so the report says as follows the police were called at 3 a.m on saturday after a number of attendees became unwell a number of attendees absolutely shocking to hear in it right um one attendee and under club the cause and died and two others are hospitalized last saturday morning the bbc reports that the cause of 22 year old death is, is currently unexplained although a drug overdose is suspected by the police he and two other friends were hospitalized after police arrived at the Tottenham, Tottenham location sorry, at 3.07 a.m. The two other men are in stable conditions. Superintendent Simon Crick has urged anyone who bought drugs in and around nightclubs to dispose of these substances as soon as possible. The news follows reports from Bristol Council warning of dangerously strong pills in circulation, leading to the death of one young person and hospitalization of several others. Visit the loop to learn more about harm reduction, what to do in drug related emergencies and strategies to stay safe. Sites like so Drug and Me and Psycho Nor Wiki provide information on the extensive range of substances while Roll Safe and Trip Safe offer education specific to mdma psychedelics and respect oh, respectively sorry um and obviously they've got more info they're kind of detailing exactly what went on and um you know the cause has been alleged that these blue tesla pills that have been you know around the scene at the moment so first things first obviously you know thoughts and feelings go out to the family um of this 21 year old like no one wants to hear of their family member um close friend passing in such tragic circumstances so that goes out to them hopefully his friends um you you know wish them a speedy recovery but the really challenging and tough thing about this is that in the uk for the most part our sort of like harm reduction um drug education programs whatever they may be are pretty much horrendous right especially when you come, come to the government there's not a lot of things in play at the moment that make it easy for certain clubs or sites to have um the ability to let people anonymously test their drugs or sometimes even not anonymously right to ensure that they're all safe and with that comes a lot of charlatans and if there isn't i'd say from my little experience going out and you know going around places in europe i'd say the most scummiest probably drug dealers have to exist here in the uk in terms of the amounts that they give you which are always underweight that's in the quality of the drugs that you get given and generally the quality of service don't get me wrong you know you're not shopping on amazon so you don't expect to get flipping you know top-notch service and speedy delivery but in terms of an overall experience there's nothing quite like um the horrors of having to try and get drugs anywhere here in the uk especially in london there's so much competition that everyone ends up undercutting each other and undercutting each other generally means that the punt is in up getting poor quality product and to be completely honest i was surprised that it did happen sooner i would expected you know spending such a prolonged period of time at home and not being able to go to clubs and then the club suddenly reopening all at once would kind of 
um, lead to loads of unfortunate deaths, deaths, especially in the opening weekend. But luckily, touch wood, that didn't happen. But then to have this come out of nowhere because of a bad batch of pills um, is really heartbreaking because, like I said, like before, no one really wins in this sort of situation, right? Um, it's a bad look, obviously, for the cause. That goes without saying. But again, it's not really their fault because in the scene, if they become one of the places that's really strict in terms of how they search people and having a zero tolerance policy on people taking drugs, then more often than not, that's going to lead to the definite overall kind of killing of their reputation they'll end up kind of being the club that no one really wants to go visit anymore so they kind of you know are caught in a weird place where if they if they're a bit too heavy-handed people are going to generally run away from the club and if they if they kind of go with the kind of like if we don't see it we're not report it kind of strategy then it sometimes leads to the situation and i'm not saying that this is what happened but you know i'm just kind of running through it and then of course for the kids um who um, who kind of luckily had survived they're probably going to get survivors guilt you know having one of their close friends pass away from something that they took themselves um it's not going to be a good feeling waking up and kind of learning that news and then of course you know friends and family associated with it are going to suffer and i'd say maybe the scene overall because generally when stuff like this happens there's usually a change in something approaching laws and something maybe in license when it comes to the cause something's going to eventually happen in, in a legal way that's going to negatively affect people now don't get me wrong i'm not talking about the scene in general like it matters in this situation who gives a crap but i'm just saying of the kind of um, the domino effect of one person, one dealer deciding to kind of, you know, make a crappy quality product in order to undercut his rival dealers in order to make sure that he's selling that then gets picked up by kids that probably don't have that much money or just want to get higher for the cheapest amount of price possible. And then when the situation also, which made me think about harm reduction, for the most part, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, like drug testing kits aren't that expensive. They're fairly inexpensive, right? I'm going to say they're probably under 50 pounds, sometimes even under 20 pounds, right? But for whatever reason, people tend not to get them. So you don't have, you know, one at home. People don't generally have scales. They don't generally have like little things that you could do to make your kind of drug taking experience a bit better a bit more of a safer experience sorry and that kind of equates it similar to like travel insurance for whatever reason travel insurance is fairly inexpensive for what it is in order to kind of give you some protection if you go abroad and you end up being unwell or you get yourself in an accident but people don't tend to get it and then when you end up getting in a really severe accident you wish you did get it because you know spending the extra 20 50 100 euros on travel insurance is going to protect you you know all the way through if anything crazy does happen in the same way harm reduction or drug testing kits will do the same thing just so you can know exactly what you're ingesting in your body and like i said like i'm not sure what it is in other places around england but i will definitely say hands down from my experience of dealing with dealers in london we definitely have some of the most sketchy inconsistent terrible dealers when it comes to providing people with good quality drugs they just don't do it it's just not something that's ever emphasized i don't know why it is maybe it's a kind of consequence of the country we live in and the draconian drug laws we have in general that probably lead people to kind of trying to get the most out of very little because they can't get a lot over the border or you know whatever maybe or on our shores who knows what the situation is but i just wish we were in a place where we could just have adult conversations about drug taking i think i was talking to my friend the other day about it and i think i kind of equate it similar to how we have these really weird um hang-ups about discussing salary in the uk in general people don't really like talking about how much money they make um you know in, in whatever industry they work at in whatever role they're in and generally what ends up happening is that that ends up leading in my experience as well to most workplaces i've been in there's been a huge discrepancy in terms of the um salaries that people have been on unless they have like a tier some places are quite sensible where they have like a sort of like a tier um, you know way of kind of paying everybody which is quite open and transparent so if you've got a certain number of experience or at this level you're generally going to get paid within this kind of band right all that kind of idea all that kind of stuff but for the most part i've been in places where two people work in similar kind of jobs and there's like a five grand difference between their salaries which is a lot of money even a hundred pound difference is still you know principal you have to kind of get that correct and generally that tends to happen because people don't have conversations open honest conversations about where they've come from what they're on previously what they're looking to get blah 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 and that leads to then employers taking the piss out of that and kind of using that against the employees in general and kind of playing people off each other and all that sort of stuff and because you know people are just gracious to have jobs in general because maybe the job market in london is difficult i don't really know it leads to this weird place we're in and i think the same thing happens with drugs because we've got such a weird culture around drugs in the uk even though the majority of your friends and people that you know probably do take drugs no one really talks about it too openly no one wants to i don't know maybe you don't look like a crackhead or whatnot but 
there should be a far better way of kind of talking about these kind of things and again harm reduction is super super important in terms of getting us back to some level of safety because sometimes i think to myself like you know as much as stuff is very draconian here in the uk in terms of how we deal with drugs there is this lack of care and attention to detail when it comes to taking your drugs and going out and getting fucked up in general when you go on a night out in london i think most uk people when they move abroad especially to mediterranean countries or places in eastern europe central europe they get a bit of a culture shock in terms of how to pace themselves i know i did the first few times i went abroad to go in club and you realize that you know the con the pace that you're kind of running at in the uk where you're just having to you know pre your pre-sessioning before you go out then you're hitting somewhere else and you're going to another place and you're kind of pushing it to the red line as much as possible generally doesn't vibe with the kind of all day out kind of culture that they have in other parts of Europe and maybe that is what leads to them having a better relationship with drugs and they don't really have these issues because generally people tend to go out for longer periods of time they tend to spread out their drinking and their drug taking um, you know activities you know across that long period of time which then leads to less situations like this because you're not trying to cram it all in because I'd imagine by 3 a.m. at the cause it's probably going to stay open what maximum a couple of more hours if not maybe one more hour at 4 a.m it might be closing so they don't really have much time to get you know whatever they need to get inside their body to feel however they want to feel and you still don't know what time they got there did they arrive there at 11 did they arrive there at 12 were they already like you know a 50 quid session in weatherspoons already liquored up and by the time they got there they're already in a worse for wear place all these things play into it so maybe that's part and parcel or the reason why we're in a situation we're in now but regardless of what the reasons are it's really sad to see again you don't want to see somebody that young passing away you know in these kind of circumstances especially given everything that's happened over the last few years right um also in the last couple of years especially with covid and lockdown you'd imagine you know the elation you must feel as friends going out for a good a good session on the weekend then for it to end like this is just heartbreaking so again force and prayers to everybody involved um again you know send your best wishes and feelings to the guys over at the cause because i'm sure it's not benefit it's not going to be a nice time for them either um they're going to be caught in a weird position i think this is even a uh, instagram post for them that says the following it says um this weekend's events have been cancelled we are currently dealing with a medical incident outside of our control and assisting the police with all investigations we offer our condolences and sympathy to the family and friends of those involved and they're absolutely devastated stay safe look after your friends and those around you so for sure you know there's definitely going to be consequences felt for the cause even if it's not legal or whatever or police you know consequences are definitely going to be like seeing consequences we saw what happened to the fabric when they had back-to-back -back issues of people passing away and getting really sick from bad quality pills again not their fault stuff that's come outside externally is coming to their clubs and they haven't less been able to deal with it in a good way or you know they couldn't deal with it in a good way regardless it eventually led to the reputation of that club kind of going down the gutter and you know only recently they've kind of slowly but surely picked themselves up it took a really long time and again they've had government funding they've had all these support that's allowed them to kind of weather a lot of those storms a lot of outpouring of support from the scene in general so you'd really kind of hope the same happens to the cause but you never know what may happen and stuff you know it's all we're going to leave that all up to the gods in general but yeah force and feelings guys everybody associated man what a terrible terrible loss of life um and then next on the list to kind of you know get the mood a bit up so yeah again starting the podcast that that was a little bit of a bad one but i just had to get that out of the way um interesting story here developing that if i've in in general that kind of illustrates the really annoying part of sports or football or just culture in general when it comes to the uk there is this idea in general where i've got what what was it there's some finding or some report recently that got done where they basically were able to say that there's no such thing as institutional racism in the uk and all this sort of nonsense right which is by the by i'm not really someone that plays a race car too tough but what i don't like is just a failure to recognize or to kind of admit what reality is staring you in the face with right um and we tend to do that a lot in the uk there tends to be like unless something is like um unless something can be illustrated in black and white terms people just don't want to admit it and even if they are illustrated in black and white terms they still make excuses for it and this hurricane tottenham training fiasco thing is a great example of it right for the most part you know most people should be aware of harry kane is um england captain star striker for england and obviously captain for tottenham um somebody that's very in demand high quality striker scores a lot of goals contributes a lot to the team and generally regarded as one of the best strikers in europe if not the world right he's now 
um, failed to turn up to training twice now. I think Monday and Tuesday, he didn't turn up for training for his team Tottenham. And the reaction from the press and from the media has been demonstrably different to how the same treatment was given to somebody like a Paul Pogba when he was kind of flirting with the idea of leaving United. He's kind of stated on many times that he wants to leave and seek new you know, adventures, which is more in his, which is definitely in his right to do so as a sports, as an athlete, as a sportsman, whatever. You had, you got a short career in football. You need to go explore all your options. Fair enough. But he didn't go as far as not turning up for training. He didn't go as far as like not playing for the team and not being available for selection. He just basically admitted and kind of, you know, um, put the feelers out there that he wanted to leave. And then obviously his agent, Emino Raiola, is the one that basically annoyed everybody in the club, right? In terms of how he goes about things. But Harry Kane, if we're not mistaken, has done this, spoken out quite, you know, vividly um, about his desire to leave Tottenham. Also did that really weird um, walk and chat with Gary Neville, where he basically was trying to plead to Daniel Levy's conscience in terms of allowing him to leave. And then now he's deciding to go and strike effectively and not turn to training. Now, the weird thing is, the weird twist is that supposedly, from what I've read, between the lines, to Harry Kane and his team are telling Tottenham that he's not turning him to training because he's isolating at home because he's on holiday at the Caribbean with his family, which obviously is nonsense. He's just doing this to kind of force Tottenham's hand. And of course, if you know anything about Tottenham and how they run with Daniel Levy, you'd know that Daniel Levy is one person that would never be bullied, supposedly, according to a lot of the things I've read online as well. I think I've been from Fabrizio Romano. I forgot who it was from. The Here You Go guy. He said something along the lines of like, Daniel Levy is the most difficult person to deal with in English football, hands down. Of all the people to deal with, in, no, I think English football, maybe you have, I don't know which one it was. Maybe English football. Let's take English football. The most difficult to deal with. And if you know anything of the history of, you know, star players for Tottenham, whether it was Luka Modric or Gareth Bale or Dimitar Berbatov, when players have decided to go and strike or do anything like this, he's kind of gone out of his way to be even more vindictive and kind of stall the delays of the transfers. Obviously, eventually all those players left, but he's gone out of his way to make it very difficult for them to leave. And I think he's said from the very onset that he didn't want he didn't want to solve Kerry Kane in the first place and it would take a stupid offer for him to get out of the club and I think didn't they try to I think Man City or someone tried to offer like a hundred mil or something within that kind of remit and he basically turned it down and said no nah, not not a chance so he'd rather kind of let the player run out his contract than let him go and like I said it's really annoying because the difference in the response from the press has been so stark if you compared it to how Paul Popo was treated and if again just kind of um just thinking theoretically here if Raymond Sterling did the same thing as what Harry Kane is doing now just imagine what the presses will be saying or the media especially places papers like the sun and stuff if he ended up doing it or daily mail it'd just be absolute pandemonium so this tells us the following Harry Kane Tottenham striker fails to show up to preseason training again a mid-man city transfer request or sorry transfer interest Matt, Harry Kane is supposed to show up at Tottenham training ground for the second day in a row the 28 year old was due to return to Hotspur on Monday following a short holiday speculations around his future at Gavis pace but Kane did not report for preseason training and was also absent on Tuesday morning two days in a row it's understood Tottenham are disappointed with Kane's actions and are set to find him but are aware the England captain is planning to return this weekend so he's told them he's going on a strike for a week but he's going to return on the weekend which obviously is a benefit only given to the best players of the club right he's best player he's the most important player if there's anybody else right if you if this is Serge Aurier they'll probably tell you to stay where you are and they'll terminate your contract but you know they give him the kind of grace in order to do so and then it continued to discuss exclusively reported on May that Kane had told Spurs he wanted to lead the summer but with Man City, Manchester United and, and, and Chelsea supposedly interested. At the end of June, Man City made a 100 million bid for last season's Premier League Golden Boot winner. Kane is valued of upward of 120 million and Tottenham are keen to keep him despite the striker believing he has a gentleman's agreement with Daniel Levy. And therein lies the issue, right? Twofold. Number one, Man City offered 100 million for him last season and Tottenham obviously turned it down. The reason being, for the most part, is that if you're not familiar, in football scoring goals is one of the hardest things to do and finding goal scorers who can score those goals for a various amounts of teams regardless of what systems they play is also very very hard and for whatever reason nowadays seems to be one of the most hardest times to find quality strikers there's a real drought in real top level strikers um there's obviously harry kane um harland 
people some people would refer to Mbappe. There's not a lot of strikers who are operating on that high high level that a lot of the big teams would kind of pin their hopes on. And this being the guy, you know, Robert Lewandowski, of course, at Bayern Munich, but a lot of people then stay still. You know, he's got a bit of a flat track bully record in terms of how he's basically been able to perform in the Bundesliga vis-a-vis -vis when he plays for in Europe or sometimes when he plays for his home country in Poland. But regardless, strikers are one of the most, you know, um, rare commodities out there in football. So with that being said, it makes complete sense why Tottenham would turn down such a bid because, you know, they could basically put any price on him and he's still worth it, whether it's 300 million, 200 million, whatever it may be because of the goal return. If you're at the top level, then you'd assume if you're Man City that he's going to hopefully fire you to league. He's going to hopefully fire you to Champions League and the money that you generate from those campaigns would pay back whatever fee that you basically paid for him. But unfortunately for Harry Kane too, he's just over, he's just kind of at his peak now. He's at that age, what is he, probably 28, right? Right? Um, he's not going to get any better than what he is now. If anything, he's going to start um, declining ever so slightly. Um, he's obviously lucky that he doesn't really, you know, um, rely on his pace too much. He's kind of an intelligent player who can drop deep, hold the ball, pick it up, whatever. He can finish in the box. He can finish outside the box. So he's a kind of quintessential striker who relies most on his technical ability, his space, his awareness, his footballing IQ. So he may be able to prolong his career. But in terms of his ability to kind of hold up the ball, you know, play it into other midfielders, that's going to diminish as the years progress and it's only going to get worse as time goes on and obviously the other thing to kind of note as well which has been reported um i think what is it in 2021 in may earlier harry kane signed a six-year deal recently right a six-year deal i think it was in 2018 if i'm not mistaken and for whatever reason who knows why he signed that most probably because of the money right the money was probably too good to turn down but he signed a six-year deal uh, da, 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 where is it here this is from the independent oh, i can't see what say he signed yeah there we go the premier league so um kane was passionate about the club when we grew up uh promising academy goal scorer and when he signed a long-term deal in 2018 spurs were near the peak of his powers under Richard pochettino so he's basically kind of got on himself to blame because so far he's been coached under pochettino and Mourinho. pochettino being the only kind of manager who kind of got them close to even trying to win any sort of trophy and obviously Mourinho was a bit of a disaster but the, in order to you know no play in the right mind would sign you know for tottenham for six years under pochettino if you had any sense about you you would obviously sign maximum three year or maybe a two-year deal maybe four-year deal but not six because it puts him in a really bad bargaining position when it comes to kind of trying to get out of the club and this whole gentleman's agreement thing is a really bad move in terms of harry kane dealing with Dan, someone like daniel levy he should have never ever let it get to a point where they had a verbal gentleman's agreement they shook on it should have been something that was put in paper in black and white when they signed his contract in 2018 that here's my price that i want to kind of agree with the club with if a big club outside you know in the top four sorry comes in for me and they make this bid automatically it triggers my ability to kind of negotiate with them directly that should have been done in black and white that's what top players do but i think at that time you know he probably was a bit nostalgic about the idea of finishing his career at tottenham he thought pochettino was going to stay forever and ever things are looking up you know whatever it may be but in terms of thinking long term, and maybe that's just a fallacy of a football player, they're not necessarily the most smartest people in the world. But sometimes, you know, the bigger the player are, especially the high profile they are, the more of like a brand they treat it as. So they have people around them who can kind of spec out a long term vision of how they want their career to go and end it effectively. But this is maybe a, a consequence of supposedly Harry Kane's got his brother as his agent. This is probably a consequence of it. When you've got your brother dealing with your business dealings and you're probably both as smart as each other, which isn't that smart, this is where you kind of get hoodwinked in the position where you accept a really high, um, you know, a really kind of, lucrative co new contract six-year deal which i'm sure put his earning potential or his earning his uh, weekly earnings probably up in the high 200 thousands maybe even 400 thousands at tottenham which is a really high wage for that level of a club which is obviously a good bump from what he was on previously but then when it comes to trying to um win trophies and get to the point where he wants to be remembered as like a legend and all-time great in the premier league He's had a position where he's basically being held hostage at Tottenham until his contract runs down. And Spurs are in no position to sell him because they know they could never rebuy anybody of that level of quality again. Right? It makes complete sense while well, they're basically going to be strong in this position. Levy, who was appointed Juventus um, former football director, 
football officer, sorry, Fabio Paratici, as the club's new managing director, said in June he sympathizes with Kane's frustrations about the lack about the lack of silverware, but hinted that the deal could be difficult to do. Which makes sense because we're in a COVID market. Unfortunately, in a COVID market, because clubs have had the inability to generate any gates and any kind of revenue on match day, which accounts for a big number of, you know, a large number of their kind of revenue share. It means that a lot of clubs are kind of scrimping and saving and basically not willing to shell out the big bucks nor to sign players because... You know, they just don't have the money to do so. They don't they're not projecting to make a lot of money in the maybe in near to distant future and they want to be able to just, you know, survive with what they have, which is why a lot of the bigger teams haven't really made any really, really big transfers as of yet. So with that being said, and the lack of players moving either way, he's in a position now where only a few clubs can afford him and the ones that can afford him don't need him at this current moment right now, except for obviously a Man City, but the others can wait. Man City chairman um, Khaldun Albomarek meanwhile said after last season Champions League final the club will can be competitive and aggressive in the summer and is aiming to strengthen by bringing quality to the squad in the key couple outcomes position sorry and then obviously we've got here a quick update for courtesy of The Athletic pinpointing the developments Harry Kane has no plans to return to the Tottenham Hotspur supposedly according to him so this idea or this suggestion he's going to return on the weekend it looks like it's not true the club won't sell him to a Premier League team which they're adamant about, leaving insist on the gentleman agreements there, which is I'm I'm of course sure on. I'm I'm a big believer that both things can be true. Maybe they had a gentleman's agreement, but to Daniel Levy, unless it's on paper, it doesn't really matter. And of course, like I said, he's been referred to widely as somebody who's very difficult to deal with at the best of times. So in this position with, you know, dwindling revenue streams coming into Tottenham and their inability to buy anybody in the first place, they have to sell to buy anyway. He's definitely not going to be um, willing to sell him at any given price, especially if it's not a crazy one. The anger side in preseason last year, Man City think they will sign him. Tottenham will find Harry Kane. So what a crazy time to be alive. But still, man, it's just a shocking state of affairs. Um, it again goes to show that there is definitely a difference in how um, black players or foreign players are treated in the English press. And again, I wouldn't have an issue with it if they just were straight up about it, honest. I understand why they would maybe treat Harry Kane differently than how they would treat a Raheem Sterling or a, a flipping anybody that isn't an England captain. It makes complete sense. But let's just be honest about the portrayal of how certain players are portrayed um, or how certain players are kind of reported on in the media and just admit at the end of the day all players do this right all players want to you know i want to are basically glory hunters right they want to achieve more they want individual honors they want to win club trophies all this stuff right they want that especially players at the top level because your career is short you don't want to waste your career especially if you're somebody that's highly regarded um as one of the world's best playing for a team that has no ability of winning any sort of trophies what's the fun in that especially nowadays where you're able to kind of create a legacy or a memory based on one trophy because we've got you know social media and the ability to record and capture all these live events you can chop it up and clip it up and make it into much bigger a deal than what it actually is why not you know if Harry Kane just winning one Premier League title is enough to kind of solidify his status as one of the Premier League greats forever and ever just one he needs do you know what I mean and he's still got plenty of time to win that one so I definitely understand he's need to do it but let's not chastise other players who do the same thing just because of the different you know they have a different color of skin or they're from another country because effectively all football players do it clubs are not loyal to players players are not loyal to clubs it is what it is um the only thing that's loyal to any of these clubs is the fans at the end of the day and let's just grow up about this whole issue in general that's what i think next um over the weekend Lollapalooza happened in chicago and it looked absolutely sensational um it was great to see a bunch of hip-hop bikes actually perform without a vocal backing track something i complained about at um, rolling loud i thought was really really annoying but it was great to see a kind of an uptick in the performance levels at Lollapalooza. maybe it's because they have a lot more you know alternative acts that kind of play on there right indie bands or whatnot or bands in general maybe that kind of push people to kind of perform a little bit on a different sort of scale by a sort people like young fug i saw saint john um perform without backing tracks like that was great to see i even saw people like trippy red even though he didn't perform without backing tracks still try and sing or rap as much of his lyrics as possible on the mic it was still kind of annoying to the ear but still a far better experience and um performance than it would be with somebody just shouting over a, a, a tune itself and one of the standout performances of Lollapalooza of course was Tyler the Creator performing Corso one of the standout tracks from his new album Call Me If You Get Lost which is definitely album of the year for me 
hands down will eventually end up i guess winning him a grammy and loads of other awards going forward but this might have easily been one of the better intros of a t opening set in general because i think he played for like an hour and 20 minutes so like stupid um he kind of ran through all these greatest hits he went through all these greatest albums he even did an outfit change in terms of ego he did amazing but this is a great way to intro um a set that you're playing at a Lollapalooza peak time headlining set um here's talent creator performing course so live at Lollapalooza a little clip from his Instagram I be talking that fresh shit, I don't need gum. Cookie crumbs in the rolls, never know we crumbs. He ain't talked to his bitch in three days. It ain't gotta be this way. Time for the free sub. I'm gonna buy a boat. The pants of Capri got space, don't really need one. Nah, he smashed it, man. Absolutely smashed it. Like, what a great performance. There was even a boat on the stage, too, that was sort of rocking back and forth, making it look like it was in the waves. And there was a little cloud that he jumped on as well when he was singing, when he was singing, um, what was it? Was it Sweet? Was it Sweet or something, right? Yeah, I think he was singing that. Terrific, terrific performance. And I think he just announced recently, too, that he's going on tour with Kali Uchi, Vince Staples, and who's the other one? Tenzo something, right? Um, Where is it? Yeah, there it goes. Um, he announced that too so that was a great way to basically give people a taster as to what they can expect when they go and see you perform live which definitely goes to show the importance again of live shows when it comes to music like without the ability to perform your stuff live without the ability of people to be able to to be outside hearing your stuff it just doesn't hit the same and i don't know how this guy did it maybe because he was building or creating this album for it looks like a two years plus maybe um because i think a lot of people spotted especially some of the um rabid um tired the creator fans spotted that he had a couple of stickers on his suitcase when he basically went to the grammys wearing that kind of igor um costume and he had a, cu a couple of stickers on the on his suitcase that said call me if you get lost so maybe that's why he had basically was able to create an album that sounded very outsidey even though he was creating it during lockdown because i think i saw a clip of skepta saying something the same thing long right something no what am i saying because i remember seeing or hearing skepta say something similar recently where he said um he wasn't really inspired to make music during lockdown because obviously people weren't able to go outdoors and stuff it didn't really inspire him to kind of get in the booth and make music or record music and um that that is you know it's fairly evident with a lot of the stuff that came out during the lockdown it wasn't it was a bit flat and it, it didn't really hit the same way maybe because the artists weren't inspired or because they just weren't outdoors to get the feedback from the crowd whatever it may be but it does need to be said that for some reason call me if you get lost just feels alive it feels textured it feels rich the lyrics really punch through um you know Tyler probably sounds the best he's ever sounded on the album collectively I think from the front to the back maybe it goes to say that probably at the moment still his rapping ability far outweighs his singing even though his singing is really getting to the point where you would believe probably in a few years he probably might pivot completely in terms of his sound and what he's able to kind of produce as a kind of overall body of work but in terms of a, a, a kind of album from front to back like this goes really really hard especially if something for an album too that's got a lot of interludes it's got a lot of kind of DJ drop something that a lot of people are not really a big fan of in the culture nowadays for it to be so cohesive and so strong definitely goes to show the level that he's operating at the moment but yeah he announced um this obviously a tour call me if you get lost uh travel itinerary he's got obviously here tyler Baudelaire, kala uchi vince staples and tezo touchdown obviously mostly in america or well, yeah throughout america obviously from the february the 10th all the way to april the 8th it's going to be a barnstorming affair and again what a great way to kind of sell your show in it by kind of doing that amazing say did that rolling loud and then obviously a lot of palooza which was definitely the icing of the cake and then wait until your tour goes off and you're able to do it then so imagine the planning that goes into all this man that's why some of the that's why i guess it helps if you've got an artist like tyler who's kind of you know super attention to detail and wants to get involved in every aspect of his kind of um presentation of his art but in general man the work that goes into this behind the scenes this this is something that's probably been planned out a year maybe six months would be two years in advance um all in the hopes of kind of ramping up the kind of anticipation ramping up obviously um the desire to go and see that person live performing at these things live streaming it on youtube on hulu for people to watch for a nominal fee and then for them to be like you know what i want to go and back this guy on tour and then if you see somebody live on tour once if it's a good performance usually nine times out of ten 
you're a fan for life. Do you know what I mean? They've got you for life. And that, I guess, is kind of the kind of return on investment. Even though, I guess, somebody like a Tyler doing a show like this is probably not going to make as much money as somebody else because he's, a lot goes into production. He's still got the ability to kind of gain new fans and to kind of solidify his old fans by consistently putting on good shows and then you've got obviously the ability to do the merch and he's obviously you know in his camp vlog now that i went to a few years ago that's obviously there as well in the background but yeah the, one of the definitely the stand-up performances st john did really good i saw as well he smashed it in terms of his set it was great for him to hear him say basically you know he performed in front of a much smaller crowd prior um i think last year or whatever it was and then this time around you know this crowd was much bigger it's a bit difficult to judge if the crowd is there for you again because the festival people just buy tickets to go see a whole play for of people and it's a way more value for money but sometimes if you're headlining a set or you're in a small stage to have people packed your stage and have people to still be there after you know late at night is definitely an illustration of your power and you know try to create a show you saw people singing every lyrics singing all the lyrics especially the choruses and the hooks and the verses like he's got some of the best fans and St. John had the same thing too a lot of people were really kind of vibing a lot to, to his songs as well I think Young Fug as well performed a lot of Lola blues if I'm not mistaken but yeah overall good to see hip-hop people performing about backing tracks Tyler Crea going on tour sale of tickets are going to be on Friday so if you're in America definitely check them out if you're interested at call me if you get lost.com next on the list we have news courtesy of the comedy store the world famous comedy store the comedy store that i visited in what 2017 the comedy store that's at the heart of all the nonsense and controversy when it comes to the comedy scene in general when it comes to north america they've put out this interesting instagram post detailing their approach um with covid and how they basically going to do business for the next i, I guess for the foreseeable future and the tweet or the caption says the following due to our recent um change in policy regarding covid safety protocols we are offering two free tickets for anyone who gets fully vaccinated in august please email da -da -da for more and it says here the, uh, the actual post says dear fans due to recent changes in policy regarding covid 19 safety protocols which requires all our employees comedians and our customers to be fully vaccinated we want to make you an offer if you're not currently vaccinated if you become fully vaccinated one dose of jane j or two doses of pfizer Moderna after August the 1st 2021 we will provide two free tickets for you and one guest for any show in order to qualify you will need to email the copy of a full vaccination card to the following we are fully committed to providing the safest environment for all our customers comedians and staff so effectively if you want to work at the comedy store you have to get vaccinated and if you want to attend the comedy store you have to get vaccinated now this might lend some credence to the early suggestion I think there was some skepticism out there especially in a tfat case i really the place the people that generally don't really have any time for brendan because uh, i think he mentioned um on the show that he was not going to go to the comedy store because they were basically requiring everybody that went to perform there that they get vaccinated and he basically said he's just going to skip that because he's had covid what's the point of getting vaccinated which is a really terrible take to have but you know i get it um everyone's kind of got a different take when it comes to dealing with covid and whatnot let's not get into that it's not really worth the hassle but it was interesting at that time i think a lot of people were kind of scoffing at the idea and i think the reason why that was happening was mostly because they were trying to concentrate on people that were past in the store and not trying to offer show for people that out you know for people that do um what they called i think promoted shows whatever it is people are not past they basically get do able to do shows maybe on off days or whatnot if they're able to sell tickets so even concentrating more so on their own roster but as time has gone on and obviously the variant the delta variants kicking everyone's asses there's just been a need overall to just make sure they kind of continue for the foreseeable future just saying hey now we we're open we don't want to close up shop again and the best way to do it is to just ensure that we have this kind of blanket rule in place that can allow us to kind of stay open as long as possible because i guess this the fear is that if they don't do that and there is an outbreak you know they're obviously going to get shut down because they're going to go into lockdown or they want to gain favor with whoever the governor is over there and ensure that they're already doing the right thing so that if there is a lockdown maybe that they can kind of take that into consideration and maybe allow them some room to maneuver whether it's opening a limited capacity or whatnot blah 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 but in general it does go to show that you know i think most hospitality industries most nightclub scenes or nightlife scenes whatever it may be around the world are generally going to have to adopt this way forward especially private businesses because there just isn't another way around this there really isn't like what else do you do 
if you want to ensure people are able to make money both on stage or behind the bar people are able to go see comedy shows and take their minds off the kind of horrors of the world this is the only way you can do it but i'll be interested to see if there is going to be a comedy club or just a club in general a nightclub even in general yeah if there is yeah i'll interested to see if there is going to be a nightclub or a comedy club that's going to be willing to say hey we're going to be free and open. We're not going to request that you take a test, but, you know, if you do want to take one, take one. But we're not going to request your test or your vaccine card at the door. And we're just going to be loosey-goosey with it. I wonder if that place will actually exist or if they'll be brave enough to say it. And if they do, how will people react? Because it seems that like people are generally okay with this level, right, of, like, kind of response where it comes to, like, oh, hey, if you want a free, you're going to get a free ticket if you get jabbed up and stuff, right, which is a bit weird. But people are okay with that sort of stuff, but they're generally not okay when people are like, hey, we're not going to abide by the rules. In my bar, you don't need to wear a mask. You don't need to have a vaccine. People tend to get a bit weird by it, and I don't know why. Um, for the most part, especially with the Delta variant, we've learned that, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're jabbed up or whatever. You can still get it. Don't get me wrong. If you get vaccinated, more often than not, it doesn't kind of lead to your death, which is great. But for the most part, contracting the virus, you're still going to get it. Whether you get a J and J, a Moderna, a Pfizer, you're still going to get it somehow or the other. Because this variant is just flipping mutated into this absolute beast that seems to be able to kind of, you know, push against all this stuff. So effectively both positions are effectively right in one way shape or form um who really knows but be just to see what some of these comedians who are about free speech and all this stuff and you know um the second amendment and all that nonsense on their podcast how they're going to be dealing with this stuff especially if they haven't been able to make an income be able to go on stage you know tell some funny jokes whatever it may be how they're going to react to this sort of stuff i, I reckon most will probably acquiesce because you know um everyone's a hypocrite but yeah, this is something that is definitely going to be with us for a while. I think um, I don't envision, I don't envision, envision, envision this changing anytime soon. Um, probably what do you think by the end of the, this year, people are not going to be required to show negative tests or a, you know, um, a double jab vaccine card or whatever. I think still you're going to have to show that in some way, shape or form. I just don't think we're going to be in a place where we can generally say, okay, it's over because it feels like this is going to be with us forever or the media is going to construct a way of making us remember this forever. I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah, interesting to see the, where the comedy story is at, at the moment um, with their approach with COVID protocols. Next on the list, we have an update courtesy of bbc it looks like the baby is getting his ass kicked all right the baby is absolutely getting kicked from pillar to post if ever there was a reminder that things have changed nowadays and people just don't put up with what they put up with a few years ago this is definitely it this is definitely a sign of the cultural shift um which is great to see but again i think there needs to be a limit to the amount of kicking one man can take especially if you want him to learn from his mistakes and kind of grow so this is close to the bbc it says the baby thankful for education as more festivals drop him right which is a really fun Funny headline right thankful for education as more festivals drop him um this is the following scroll down is it scrolling come on you piece of rubbish okay there we go okay it says the following the baby has posted well, scroll down. the baby has posted an apology for his comments about the lgbt community saying he appreciates the education he has received since the u.s rapper has acknowledged that what he said was hurtful on stage and um it comes more than two weeks it comes sorry it comes as more than two festivals have taken him off their lineups so this is the following tweet from the baby himself he said social media moves fast um so fast that people want to do de sorry demolish you before you even have the opportunity to grow educate and learn from your mistakes as a man who has had to make his own way from very difficult circumstances having people i know publicly working against me knowing that i needed was an education on these topics that guidance has been challenging i appreciate the many people who came to me with kindness who reached out to me privately to offer wisdom education and resources that's why i needed and that's why i received i want to apologize to the lgbt community for the hurtful and triggering comments i made again i apologize for my misinformed comments about hiv and aids and i know education on this important uh, love to all god bless the baby it says after the uh, rappers of recent performance at rolling loud he made a number of negative false comments uh, regarding the lgbt community and those who have aids he asked all these members to flash their lights on their phone apart from those who are hiv positive and gay men who had sex in their cars absolutely insane he also claimed falsely that hiv will make you die in two or three weeks <laughs> those who are hiv can access medication as a result rapper was dropped from the Lollapalooza over the weekend with 
of organizers saying that the festival was found on diversity, inclusion, inclusivity, disrespect, and love. Since then, it's been announced that he's no longer a part of Governor's Ball or Day and Night Festival. So, by and large, what do I think? I think the comments themselves obviously were insane, right? What he said on the stage was absolutely nutty. But I would say if he was smart and clever, he probably could have got away with those comments if he was able to kind of, you know, kind of frame it around the idea of kind of being caught in the moment it being the first time he appeared on a big stage it was a big time for him he was thinking about some of his friends whatever right there could have been somewhere he could have spun it and then at the end of it just said i sincerely apologize i meant no ill will that would have been okay i think that what really buried him was his kind of weird doubling down when he did that instagram stories video lying on his bed um and he started basically spouting off even more falsehoods even more rubbish which effectively put him in a position where he basically had no uh, place to be on these festival lineups especially if these festivals wanted to maintain some sort of um um, would you call it social media clout relevancy or whatnot because let's not get it twisted these festivals aren't dropping in because they ethically or morally believe what he said was wrong it's just bad for business optic wise and of course it kind of has the weird byproduct of gaining them a bit of traction online making sure they're kind of on the quote-unquote right side of history and that's the only reason why they're doing these kind of things it kind of made his position untenable in that way to have the other musicians and stuff kicking while he's down is kind of in bad taste especially people like quest love and whatnot um, hip hop is built on people saying disgusting derogatory things about people from all walks of life for people to suddenly now especially someone like a quest of to suddenly kind of scoff and kind of get his you know feathers in the twist behind what the baby said is kind of disgusting the other people like elton john and madonna and whatnot all these are pop stars i don't really care about fair enough let them do their thing but in general I think another point to kind of stress that this is I, I just don't think the baby actually realized how famous he actually was. I think he wrongly assumed he was still, I wouldn't say underground, but probably not as, um, yeah, I guess he, he didn't, he underestimated how famous he was because you just can't do certain things when you're that level of famous. You're just not allowed. It just won't run the same way as if you're somebody kind of underground or less well known. And I think because of that, he kind of got a rude awakening. And then on the other side of the fact, I think the LGBTQ plus community kind of had enough and wanted to kind of flex their muscles and let us re and remind us as to what their overall position is when it comes to people spouting such nonsense and in general they basically flex their muscles and remind everybody why if you want to be a real kind of global superstar you have to play nice regardless of what you privately think and again this is me saying that you know i generally probably do think this guy probably does have some twisted views and opinions about people that are you know from the lgbtq plus community let's not believe kind of apologies it's just apologizing because it's bad for business let's get that out of the way really really honestly i don't think you know he's got any friends who are from the lgbtq plus community either he's probably not grown around many people from that community either so let's just be honest about this sort of stuff so for sure he's got some very you know twisted opinions of people from that scene and I guess this was a reminder that if you want to be a global superstar, if you want to be like, you know, people effectively call him the, the new gen Nelly or basically a combination of Nelly and the ludicrous, kind of the new uh, pop rapper kind of guy who jumps on hooks and whatnot. He's on an Anita track, he's on a Dua Lipa track, that sort of level of rapper. If you want to be that guy, you just can't go around saying the stuff that he does. You can't go around doing the stuff that he does, you know, beating up random people on stage because they touched you, um, you know, beating up allegedly a story about some Airbnb guy that he smacked up or some of his crew smacked up because, you know, he's there to talk back to them, whatever it may be doing. You just can't carry yourself in that way because you're a global superstar, right? You just, there's just too many business in in interests and brands and what are attached to you that will just make that kind of activity just untenable it's just not going to happen so i think it's a great wake-up call for him in terms of a career when all these festivals i think so far we've got how many festivals so far i think we've got i don't know many it sounds like many of course there's the apology and then you've got here um also news from glock topics it says the baby also dropped by midtown music festival in atlanta making it the sixth festival to drop him i think so far there's another one too right so there's six there's midtown festival there's acl festival there's day and night in vegas there's Lollapalooza. There's Governor's Ball, and then there was Park Life, of course, in the UK that decided to drop him too. And like I said, I think 
in general, I'm not a real big fan of cancellations. I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not good on it. I think when the industry or, um, you know, powers that be gatekeepers decide to cancel someone's career because what what they said, it can have a really detrimental effect on your career overall, especially if you're stopped from being put on playlists and you're not being booked on these big shows. It doesn't give you the ability to reach a big audience, which effectively doesn't allow you then to make money. But obviously these places are all privately owned and festivals and whatnot if they decide collectively to kind of give him a time out and a pause for this summer at least because of what he said and how insensitive it was and how it affected a a, a population of people that attend their shows then i definitely understand um that that, that position that they're in but in general <laughs> It was like such a bad move, such a massive faux pas that he kind of deserves it, right? He kind of deserves it. It's kind of one of those weird places to be in where I don't want to see anyone have money taken out of their pocket. I do think sometimes cancellations can go too far. I do think other celebrities coming out and kicking him while he's just down is disgusting. All that, you know, shape and form, whatever it may be. But I still think these places probably do have a responsibility to let it be known that they're not going to stand for certain topics being discussed or said in their stages. But of course, there's a, you know, hypocrisy in there when it comes to rappers because they say some crazy stuff in the lyrics just because he said something on stage and didn't rap about it. Suddenly it's a problem. I, I just don't know. I, I think if he would have rapped it in a verse, would he still been kicked off all these stages? I'm not too sure. Um, the fact that he said it was such vim and then doubled down in the other video probably led to the position that he's in now at the moment. Moment. and again in terms of a lesson because i feel like you know the baby's been on a tear a bit he's probably calmed down recently but it seemed like every other week he was beating up somebody random i think if there was a reminder that he needed to kind of wake up and realize how famous he actually was and position that he's in and the people that depend on him because again let's let's say how many festivals is it so far i think if i'm not mistaken it's like you know it's at eight i think last time i checked is it is this place here yeah i think it's i think it's eight right so far so some someone says eight let's say six even if it's eight right or let's six or eight it's still probably close to like already a million dollars in fees right i think in terms of appearing I've, but i think sometimes when it comes to these big festivals usually they have like a a fee that's non that's non-refundable that they basically have to pay you even if they do cancel i think maybe the stipulation the contract but i'm sure there is like a percentage they have to kind of give up front but regardless it's still costing him and his team upwards of a million dollars easy across all those festivals which again a million dollars is going to get bust down to a lot of people right everyone kind of takes a bit of it right whether it's the booking manager the tour manager the agent people at the label his team they're all missing out on a lot of change and as as we've seen with a lot of these american festivals they're all kind of back to back during the summer right they're all kind of um kicking off weekend week weekend to weekend weekend to weekend they're all kind of flowing into each other and it's a great way as we saw with the tyler the creator video at lot of blues it's a great way to market your tour if you're going to then promote it later on or a tour that you're going on later on maybe next year or whatnot it's a good place to kind of you know gain new audiences or gain new fans and basically make it be known that you put on a good show if someone wants to go and see you so his inability to do that this entire or summer is definitely going to affect his ticket sales i'd imagine because i just don't think he's in a position he's not he's in that weird position where he's really well known but probably not liked enough for people to kind of cap for him especially on the stuff that he said because some some fan bases you'd feel like would go above and beyond to try and excuse what their favorite artist said but he probably isn't in that position at the moment now so again maybe it's a lesson learned i still think you know people are going a bit overboard hopefully it just lasts until the summer and it just kind of dies off in the winter and he can kind of get back uh, on form where it needs to be and hopefully this could be a learning moment i don't think it is because like i said i just i just think he's saying it because he's effectively hurt in his pocket but hopefully it's a learning moment in terms of how he approaches is that community in general his thoughts and opinions on it and maybe this can kind of lead to some overall change in a person you never know you hope so but i doubt it but you know stranger things have happened stranger things have happened moving on what else we got here let's not talk about that we don't care oh yeah we got this i just talk about this is this is a good one so this is courtesy of ra it says here how to be a creep fights harassment on the dance floor pretty decent initiative i think i was going to mention before all the parties came back i was going to do like a little you know video rounding up some of the top 10 things not to do if you're a dude going out on a night out again right for the first time and one of the points is going to be like you know 
if you can't get a cheeky little, you know, snug at the, on the dance floor or like a little, you know, bum touch or whatnot, or a little a little hug. Nowadays, especially with people not being able to go outdoors for what the first period of a, a year and a half, if that isn't able to come easy to you in relative sense of the form, then you definitely should just probably leave in it. You shouldn't be in a position where you're kind of cruising, creeping and pushing onto people um, without their permission in this period of time this should be one of the easiest times to try and hook up with somebody because effectively both sets of sexes are just craving gagging for it, especially from the stuff that i've seen um over the weekend and the night out so if anything the if you're the kind of harassy creepy type you're definitely going to stand out more and look like more of a creep than you already do especially in this climate that we're in at the moment i would imagine but this initiative is pretty awesome the initiative will launch um, return to the source an anti-harassment campaign at gala festival in london happened this weekend that looked pretty awesome it says don't be a creep dbac just launched return to source an anti-harassment campaign this weekend the campaign will be shared across south london's events and social media channels and feature eight posters on festival sites having been discontinued um disconnected sorry from the music community it's easy to feel like a satellite sometimes but even when we're isolated we're orbiting in the same source reads a press release the source is what it means to be human and to commute to commune with the community it's where our compassion and our care for another resides ruby savage launched dbac in 2017 after a series of unpleasant experiences and dj booth while running a post-punk club night at vogue fabrics the song too many creeps by no way band brush tetras was a source of inspiration imagine being a girl and being kind of groped on and touched up unwillingly unwantingly whatever and in the dj booth i'd imagine a lot of un you know and towards stuff happens on the on the dance floor smoking area in public spaces but imagine creeps finding their way behind the sacred the, the sacred place such as the dj booth that is heinous isn't it the lyrics of that track just says here yeah, are incredible savage told resident advisor and it really caught and it really collided with me doing a lot of dj work and, re and realizing holy shit there's a lot of creeps out here <laughs> savage printed a run of don't be a creep t-shirts which she stashed and sold from under her desk at work the response was immediate it says i noticed straight away a lot of dudes were like yes getting me to get me this tea i want to be an ally i want to support it raised really interesting conversations she said i end up having an educated i end up having to educate male friends on how much i how much shit goes up and goes down on the night out that's true um i think i only really notice how much stuff goes down really the last couple of years obviously reporting on some kind of indiscretions happen indiscretions happening obviously within the dance music scene with certain djs i realized wow these people are out here doing the most in it i would assume you know maybe that some stuff would happen but not to a level obviously they happened over the last few years and obviously with that who's that dj that passed away he obviously got involved in some madness that definitely opened my eyes so a lot of stuff is happening but continued here says I think a large part of why it resonates so well with people is because it's born out of creative expression and real emotion and frustration. And I think people feel that um, it's really important for us to continue to lead with visuals in order to destigmatize a topic which has become so stigmatized and in a climate which has always come, which has become, oh, sorry, and in a climate which has become all about counterculture. It's also about calling people out in and not calling people out. I like that. And for us, that's the communication needs to do. So far, DBAC has collaborated with a number of London venues, along with We Are Here Festival and Melbourne's Angel Music Bar. The duo also have a planning of a red table, a round table, so discussion with community stakeholders and including security staff, promoters and club owners. A lot of people who want to help improve don't actually know how to or where to begin. Uh, they're, they're not saying we will have the answers, but we're very, very determined to try and find them and try to try them out if you make a culture what you can hear so if you can make a culture where you can hear your mate telling you yo that's not cool i think that's a prevent so much you continue you can prevent people's lives from falling apart exactly and i think that's all it really takes for the most part i don't know how the percentage it works out but i'd imagine a lot of dudes who are kind of heavy-handed and don't really know how to approach you know somebody that they're interested in a club generally just don't know how creepy they're actually being and once it's kind of brought to their attention usually the good ones can fix up and kind of correct their sort of approach or just how they generally kind of experience and navigate nightlife i'm so a big believer in people should probably not go out with the explicit intention of trying to hook up with people especially if you're a dude i think usually that stench of first and kind of desire to get in between someone's legs is definitely something you can smell from a mile off if not more so you're probably 
would do yourself more favors if you probably just go out and try and enjoy yourself hands down regardless of what happens at the end of the night um but in general if you are going to go out with that intention it probably is good to get some resources and learn what happens how it kind of affects the people on the other side especially when it comes to the females um how they basically interpret things um how something that you can deem to be um, innocuous can have a severe impact on how someone feels and how they enjoy their night and just have after effects throughout the week and whatnot there's little things that you probably don't realize as a dude that's super important so it's great to see them doing such a thing it's a great initiative something that i'm definitely for again speaking about on whatever little platform that i have and you know i try uh, you know i don't really have a big social group in my own that i kind of go out with in general but if i am with people who are being a bit too handsy i do go out my way to kind of remind people hey you need to act cool you know don't do x y and z and i've definitely been somebody that's kind of been able to help people out in that way shape or form so everyone can do a little bit themselves and then what's, what's that what's that quote it's like oh if i sweep my garden then hopefully my neighbor will see me sweeping mine and then he'll do the same and effectively the whole neighborhood will be clean right so that's effectively what we want to do we want to call out and kind of hold to account the people that we know closest and nearest to us and hopefully that will have you know um a uh, kind of an after effect a domino effect that will lead our people to doing the right thing on the dance floor and then effectively we'll have a far more harmonious place that can you know bring out the best in everybody and be a great place for people to hang out in general next on the list we had this picture courtesy of Lizzo on Instagram. Um, when I first saw this, I'm not going to lie, I did think it was Meg Thee Stallion, which is, you know, probably not kind thing to say. But just on first glance, I did think that kind of like there's like a really f weird thing happening with style, I guess, nowadays with when it comes to black like, um, female entertainers, where there's a lot of kind of um, excess and kind of be dazzlery and whatever. Right. The, or that, that kind of non eyebrow thing trend going on, too. So effectively, end up everyone kind of ends up looking the same without really looking that interesting, and that's probably why I kind of incorrectly thought that was Megan Thee Stallion first. But I have to be honest, I'm happy to see her. Um, obviously, this is an image says here, "New Era Bitch" rumors out on the 13th of the 8th. So obviously, it's new music, which is great to see, great to hear, because I've been one of the rare people that's been completely fed up with all the antics that Liz has been doing on social. Um, I think if I read correctly from a report, I think it's been two to three years since her last single dropped and within that time which is probably good marketing and good sort of like um a and r for an artist especially if you're not you know in a good place to release music to still be in the headlines and still kind of be um you know the butt of jokes or be able to kind of get become viral without releasing actual music is probably a, a great talent and a great ability to have but for somebody that's a casual fan of what Lizzo does musically it's just annoying to kind of constantly see another stupid video another dumb point recently what was the one it was her kind of dispelling the rumors that she kind of um, stage dived or crowd surfed and killed somebody in the audience which is dumb because fair enough it was her poking fun at her how big she is but then at the same token a few months ago she was the one crying on social media that people were taking the piss at how big she was so it's like you can't have it both ways you probably can if you're a lizard because you know people let you but you can't be the victim and also then use it as a part of your marketing material which, I mean, it just gets becomes annoying after a while just stop all the gimmicks and just put out good music i'd say the same thing with like little nas x and like every release is a flipping spectacle it's a gimmick it's some sort of way to kind of get people annoyed at you and pissed off and whatnot it just becomes a bit tiring after a while you just need to go back to just making good music just make something as good as all time around again which he probably hasn't done from what i've listened to of you know briefly of his material but it's great to see lizzo back hopefully the music's good again i'm one of those people that's a fan of her actual music i don't think again it's not something i'm going to be banging in a whip but i do think she's got a pretty decent voice she makes these good good enough pop music um she should be on stage more often because she does perform pretty sick live considering how big she is as well she is a really really great performer from the videos that i've seen as well so i'm definitely looking forward to hearing more stuff from lizzo next on the list we had this weird, interesting video courtesy of Link Up TV featuring Stormzy gifting Santan Dave, man like Dave who just dropped one of the best albums actually of the year from a UK artist and allegedly sold already 75,000 um, records in the first week, which is flipping insane. But allegedly he gifted Dave an AP watch, a Repolia 101. And Dave had a very interesting reaction to receiving the watch, which I'm going to play for you now. No. 
Not that incredible, really. It's always a bit interesting and weird, isn't it, when you see really successful rich people gift each other really expensive items and then pretend to be shocked or be taken aback by a really expensive gift that they could effectively buy for themselves. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not really that au fair with watches. I don't really know my watches too well. I don't obviously wear one myself. Um, or I'd, I'd imagine an AP is probably worth a lot of money. Maybe it's close to a million, whatever it may be. But, you know... Dave is a superstar. He's one of our most well-known artists here in the UK. Definitely somebody that could tour, you know, big arenas or big venues here in the UK. Could probably do a good enough, a good decent numbers of tickets in Europe. Um, definitely somebody that's got a little bit of a... Um, of a foot store in North America in terms of the stuff that obviously he's done with other artists out there too. So he's somebody of, of a good standing who we'd imagine could afford such a watch. And even if he couldn't, it's just interesting. I think or kind of funny and strange that somebody who, you know, Dave is what, let's say mid twenties. Um, I'd imagine he's probably only known of APs and Odemars and watches or whatnot because of the wealth he's ascertained. Because the only reason why I know of it as a listener is because I hear all my favorite rappers talking about APs, right? The more wealth they attain, the more access they get, the more different you know places that they're kind of introduced to, the more their tastes are refined and you kind of get to see them talk about different things in their lyrics. And over time, the consumer gets to learn about different brands and then the brands obviously get a bit of exposure and hype and then they probably link up to the collaborations. And it's a kind of, you know, it's a, it's a really symbiotic relationship in that respect. So you'd imagine that Dave only really knew of APs because he became a successful rapper. Uh, so it's not as if like it's like a deep lying love that like, he's had from when he was like 12 or 13 right he's always wanted an ap uh, unless he is a watch guy i don't know maybe he was kind of reading hudinki back when he was in flipping secondary school but it's just funny that these brands have such a pull have such a kind of hold on people that in the span of what a couple of years he's got to a point of where he didn't know what an ap was to where he's screaming covering his hand right and really kind of ecstatic and you know lost for words because one of his best friends in music decided to give him an ap watching again best friend in music you know best friend because you know if you if he was a bum rapper i don't think storms he would really be good friends with him in general but it's just an interesting reaction i think we saw the same thing with um when um the rappers tried to buy what did they buy is it robert Kraft or someone one of these rich american uh, american football basketball owner type guys and they, they bought him like a car or something it was like dude he could probably buy that on ebay himself you know in a couple of clicks do you know what i mean it's not really that impressive but you know i guess when you're a friend of somebody and you do believe in the art of gift taking you have to kind of try and attempt to make something new and whatever and of course this is probably this looks like one of those brand deal events because they've got like a massive ap ornament thing toy whatever thing next to them so probably you know there's a whole deal in tie with it i don't really know what happened but it's just interesting as a reaction to have somebody that effectively probably only known of watches of that extent of that level in the last two years maybe three maybe four maybe five get this excited over having that it's just very very interesting um, stay with affairs big up everybody in there too you know awkwardly looking on as one guy hands another guy a multi-million dollar watch and you're just standing there with your casio you know or with your because that's a funny bit as well isn't it? The, the, the juxtaposition of all this stuff for sure there was somebody in that crowd at that album release party or whatever they were at. i don't know what they were doing there's probably someone in the audience that had a minus on their account somebody in your audience was probably you know questioning how they're going to get home somebody that probably just had enough eggs to survive for the week somebody that's just got fired somebody that is working you know minimum wage there's definitely people that exist in that room but then there's also somebody next to you kind of passing watches like this as gifts so it could be twofold it could be motivating it could make you want to strive and succeed and go for the things that you want to go for or it could be debilitatingly depressing <laughs> to see people far younger than you exchange these gifts quote unquote that are you know that would effectively pay for your life and make you retire tomorrow if if need be 
it's just a funny thing to see. But maybe it's good kind of um, karma coming back to Dave, isn't it? Because the other day he was giving out Jordans. The other day he gave some kid a Rolex, right? Do you know what I mean? And this is now coming back to him, you know, pressed down, shaking all together. And then he got the 75K first week sales on his album. It's all well and good. But like I said, it's just funny to see somebody who just learned about this thing recently because they're rich then become really excited to the point where they're covering their mouth and giggling and kind of hysterically kind of screeching like a girl um but then again you know i'm sure if one of my best friends bought me a million dollar watch i probably might have the same um response to it maybe because in the back of my head i'll be thinking hey i'm gonna sell this <laughs> i don't know but yeah big up dave regardless um that new album out and now at the moment is fucking sensational if you haven't checked it out already definitely check it out absolutely amazing what was that song called i like the best and fire right with gigs and freddo freddo's got a flipping spectacular verse on there definitely make sure you check out the album from dave what's it actually called i forgot the name of it let's see if we can hover up and see this thing or oh, it doesn't it doesn't say on his thing but regardless um dave's got a new album at the moment go and check it out if you're not that way inclined it should be on your streaming plus services right now next um what else we got da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> what else do we have here? Um, yeah, let's talk about these a little bit. So this is Curse of High Beast, so it's Drake's Nocta and Nike Hot Step Air Terrors. I think they've been getting a lot of hate online, but I'm going to defend them. Um, mainly because at least Drake is going for a model that isn't bait. It's not going for the easy peasy Air Max 90, Air Max 1s, 87s, 97s, right? He's trying to kind of, you know, obviously I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of agreement between himself and Nike to kind of introduce this model that they're going to retro. Obviously, as they usually do, they kind of do it via a collaboration first, hopefully get a good response and then GR it later on down the line. But at least they're taking a chance on it. It does look a little bit like one of those feelers that all the Spanish and Italian girls are wearing on you a few years ago right they were one of the biggest sellers i think they might have, that year they came out if i'm not mistaken they might have been one of the highest selling trainers outside of like a dr martin which is nuts in it in terms of footwear in general but i definitely think they were up there i think there was like the jade and that chunky feeder that all the girls were wearing at one time it does look similar to it i'm not going to lie but it still looks good and it's still an interesting shape it's still an interesting silhouette it's something new something fresh um it's going to push things forward a little bit i think it goes with his whole aesthetic when it comes to the track suits with that whole nocta line i like it i'm personally a fan um would i necessarily wear it day to day probably not they're probably you know too gargantuan looking for me but in general as a shooter having your rotation as a kind of obscure sneaker that you can kind of pull out because i'm a big fan of having shoes that aren't necessarily Shoes that kind of divide opinion in your wardrobe, in your rotation. This would definitely be one to add. Is that like a silver enameled swoosh there? Yeah, come on, man. These are these are pretty fire. I'm pretty sure the other colorways too are going to be great. It says here, Clash of Hype Beast joining the early looks we've had already received. We now have another look at Drake's Nocta and Nike Hot Step Air Terror. Coming in a clean white chrome colorway, the, col the upcoming collaboration sneaker continues the Canadian artist's ongoing Nocta Sublime partnership with Nike. I like that they've got the yellow bubble too. I guess that might be a nod to some of the sort of like um, vintage shoes that you'd find, especially with air bubbles. Some of the bubbles are kind of clouded up or sometimes a bit yellowed, a bit stained. Maybe that's kind of a nod to it. I like that little hit there. The Nocta Air, air, air Hot Step nike hot step air terror features a premium white upper constructed with dynamic paneling and creates a quality effect marked by perforations and further detailing comes in the form of an aggressive heel counter um a shiny silver emblem on the eyelets and a mini swoosh branding elevating the shoe are sculpted matching midsoles with large yellow units paired with a toothy rubber outsole price 150 U usds hot step terror is now expected to release sometime in the fall so yeah i'm a big fan of it um big up drake for trying something a little bit different and hopefully we'll see those very soon um and then what else we have here <laughs> um i think that might be how, how many hours have we got i think we've kind of gone over an hour haven't we we got this we got that we got that yeah we kind of got an hour let's just stop there for now We've already gone over an hour. It's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual. Yeah, hour 12. Yeah, let's just stop there for now. An hour 12. It's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual. 
Um, if it's your first time, check out the show via YouTube. You know what to do. Smash the like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you're listening to the podcast app, hit me, share, obviously, leave me a five star review, and of course, support via Patreon. It's also more than welcome at patreon.com for just like You can find all the this details in the show notes descriptions. Click on there, get subscribed. It's only one quid. You can get access to all my bonus content. Why delay? Get on it today. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Until then, take care. Be safe. Peace.